Welcome back, everyone. Going into the third hour here of Court of Swords. We're in the palace, Adam. Yeah, yeah, and it is a it is a terrible night to have a curse. Um, the palace doors. I think that's that was the last thing we saw were these big round red lacquered doors, and we saw Zafira approach to to push them open. And the the doors uh, they appear to be barred or locked or shut from the inside in some way. They don't open when you when you push them. Um, so uh, what do you want to do? The actual palace itself has several entrances, but the front door is uh, is shut. It is, is your way is barred. Uh, when I push it, what it, does it feel like? It's just like does it give at all? Does it? How does it feel reinforced? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, it gives enough that you can tell. Like it's yeah, it's barred on the other side. It's barred from the inside. I turn to Baron and say, "You want to help take this down, or should we go another way?" Uh, we could try giving it a good shove and see if we can bash it together. All right, on three. We kind of just like <laughs> step yeah, right, back yeah. a couple. I'll let you <laughs> okay. take the lead. And then I kind of like, I, I roughly like calculate in my head, like if he takes off, then I need to catch up, blah, blah, blah. So we have like the exact force. And he'll be slower. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want us to make strength checks? Uh, yes, please. Check, saving throws. What do you... Um, in this case, it's it's an athletics check. Okay. Athletics. Okay. Yeah. You roll first, Bryn. 16. Okay. Um, it would Six. it would actually just it would actually just be one roll because you're working together. So it's Baron Baron's roll with advantage. Oh, so 19. Yeah, it's the 19. Yeah. Um, which is fine. So you yeah the two of you like throw your shoulder against the door. You have to do it a couple of times, but you hear even on the first hit you hear something splinter uh, inside. Mm -hmm. You're the cracking of wood, and then throw yourself against the the door a couple more times, and then it gives and like breaks in awkwardly, and the the wooden bar that was holding it is now splintered and, and broken. Uh, right. So you can enter the enter the palace. Yeah, I kind of like dust off and say easy enough, and start mm -hmm. walking down the the path to the king and queen's quarters. Okay, all right. Um, so you uh, you you walk the the halls of the of the palace, and I think that as you do, um, the sound of of footsteps in the in the hallway, especially like your armor rattling, Baron, and um, you know you're you're all carrying weapons. Um, the uh the it draws the attention of the people that are still in the palace so you know some it looks to be mostly just servants that, that are mm -hmm. left here um the palace has been more or less abandoned by the the ringing of the of the bell but um i think at one point um uh, one of the servants that actually baron the one that was with you when you were examining uh, the page um he uh he peers out uh behind a uh, uh behind a, a door and uh and like looks at you kind of like what what's going on? We're here to find the king and queen. Do you know? Have you seen them or their guard? He 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 shakes his head. N no, no. Everyone fled. I I thought the streets too dangerous to leave, so I stayed here. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, have not been disturbed. But it's been several hours. The guards rushing about. I think there was a fire. Is everything well, Magistrate? What's happening? There's been a catastrophe, but unfortunately we don't have the time to go into it. Can you get us into the King and Queen's room or know someone who can? Um, he, 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 he kind of like looks uncertainly at you. Um, can you make a, a persuasion check? Okay. One. Hey, good Whoa. job there. <laughs> good job there, Baron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says, um, my, my apologies, Magistrate, but I've been instructed in times of, uh, how did you say, catastrophe, uh, that the king and queen are under the guardianship of the knight and that he would protect them. Uh, I, I cannot stop you, of course, from going to their room, but I cannot offer much in the way of aid. The king and I'm queen sorry. will hear of your resilience. We are going at once. Yeah, he, he nods. Uh, th thank you, Magistrate. But uh, and and you you start to like leave. Yeah, I, I start walking. Yeah, he, he leans out and he, he like as you start to go. He, and I think he's just a Baron. Like, uh, perhaps it's best if I come with you. Uh, none know the palace better than than I do. I I have been servant here for many years. I, if there's anything I can help you with, or uh, aside from uh, opening the chambers of the King and Queen, of course. But anything else, uh, it's times of danger. You need a loyal servant at your side. Yes. Are you, are you familiar with the inside of the king and queen's room if we happen to find ourselves inside? 
he he nods and, and says, uh, of course, if, if you were somehow to find your way uh, within their chambers, I, I have been uh, within many times. Uh, it is a, an honor only given to the highest servants. I have uh, fed the meals myself. I think it might be all right to bring him with us. He might be able to help us inside the room. And he, he turns to whoever it is you're speaking to, to nod, to be like, yes, see, listen to the priest. What a smart idea to take me with you. I whisper so he can't hear to like like Baron or or uh, if you're about to be a meat shield. <laughs> yeah, I I kind of speak up and say, do not get in the way. Answer questions we have, and you may accompany us. Yeah, he he he, he shakes his head and and uh, he he's like, yes, yes, staying out of the way is a talent of mine, and answering questions is a second only to staying out of the way. I I, I will do whatever it is that I can to help you, magistrates. And he, he like peers out into the hallway as if like, is it, is it safe? Like, there's no, I'm not going to get my head cut off. I come out of here and then kind of shuffles out into the uh, into the hallway. Have you seen many bodies tonight? As we're, as we're like walking down the hallway, and he kind of gasps. He's like, bodies. No, no. It, was the palace attacked? Should I, should I be prepared to see the dead? I'm, I'm not a man of strong constitution. I, I fear I might faint. Steal your soul. You will see dead bodies. He, he snaps out uh, one of these like hand fans and just like waves it on him. So he's like, <laughs> very well. I will, I will steal myself for the good of my, my country. How long have you been a servant here at this castle? He, uh, he says, why I, I, I was, uh, I was, I was born here. I have served the king and queen since before they were the king and queen, their, their previous incarnations were under my care and tutelage as well. It has been my whole life's work to serve them. Okay. So then, you know, the palace, like the back of your hand B better. In fact, good. We'll, we'll need your help. If I turn around in any moment when he's fanning himself and look at his fingertips, are they the same color as the rest of his skin? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, his his fingernails are all um, like really like perfectly manicured too. They come to like a slight point and they have like gold uh, like lacquer on them. Okay. Um, he has uh, on his uh, on his fingers. Um, uh, slightly like he's not a tanned individual. He stays inside most of the time, but he has a slight discoloration uh, in the place where you would wear rings on several of his fingers, but he isn't wearing them now. Um, he's wearing uh, like a dressing gown basically. Um, and it's, it's of, of the finest quality. Okay. So you, you dress very well for a servant. He, he nods. Uh, he says, um, well, as you know, Magistrate, I, I am no slave, and to be head of servants is a, a fine position for any man or woman to hold. I am a, a member of the king and queen's court, albeit a humble servant of their leisure. I, still, it affords me some degree of comfort here. I must ask, when you were in the pages' room, did you see any foreign characters approach? He looks at Velomir and then looks at you and says, no, Magistrate. You would not aside, lie to and, me. And the, the, no, the implication there is he's not lying to you. The hesitation is like, aside from this fucking sleazy piece of shit over here, no, I have not seen any foreigners. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I kind of like look over at Velomir with a confused brow and then turn back and say, you are right to fear this man. Let us continue. We need to find the king and queen at once. Yeah. Then we rush towards the king's queen's place. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So we we cut to we get a a fade or a wipe or whatever to the um the outside of the the king and queen's uh, chamber. And of course, uh, as as predicted, the door is locked from uh, from within. Um, unlike the uh the the barring of the uh, of the doors, uh this uh, this place uh, has um. Uh, has a, a proper like lock you would use a key on. I I I like you know try the door and everything and figure that out and turn to the servant and say, "Do you have the key?" Um, he uh, he he smiles sort of furtively and 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 bows and uh, and says, uh, <laughs> "Unfortunately, we have reached the extent of my loyalty's ability to serve, magistrate." I do, but I cannot give it to you. Baron? Would it? 
Could you? <laughs> could I uh, see your key ring, please? Uh, he he says, um, uh, "Of course, Magistrate." And he, he like reaches into his tunic, and you can feel him like he's got a little purse like that he hides under his uh, under his cloak, and he takes it out and uh, draws out a, a ring of uh, of finely crafted sort of baroque looking. Like these aren't big, heavy like iron keys. These are all really like nice sort of fine keys. Which of these keys is the most important? Would you say? He uh, he says, well, well, there are many treasures to be found in the palace, and each of these keys locks another one of them away. But I would have to say, magistrate, that were I to choose a favorite, the key with the sapphire upon it is perhaps the finest crafted. Wow. Let me uh, take a look at that key, if you don't mind. Of course, magistrate. And he like hands you hands you the ring. I as as that happens, I like go and put my arm around the the servant and. Face him in a different direction and go, what is down that corner? Or what is down that way? <laughs> and I just yeah, kind of like says, point at uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, he says, well, of course, Magistrate, I have intimate knowledge of all of the histories of every corridor in this place. Why, that carpet there, my lord. And he like walks you over and he starts telling you the story about how the carpet is a gift from the like, you know, page, a, a traveling member of the, the Court of Wands and like, you know, going into great detail, being very attentive about the pattern and like, you know, so you're both off somewhere else staring at the floor. While, while they're doing that, I try the key on the door. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it, totally, it totally opens the door. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The second oh, the door. Happens to be open. Oh, they left the door open. What a yeah. miraculous event. We must hurry. Yeah. And then I just like turn and forget whatever the fucking guy's saying. Yeah, he stops right away as soon as, as, soon as he hears the door open. Uh, he says, what a fortuitous turn of fate. And he, he comes over to you, Baron, and, and says, um, Magistrate, uh, if you are uh, finished viewing them, and he like reaches for the keys. Yes, they're I, very I'm duty, high quality. I'm duty bound to protect them. And he takes them and like puts them back in his, in his purse. Uh, and, and says, I, I live to serve Magistrate. <clears throat> Do your job very well. He, he smiles. When, uh, when we enter the room, I say, the last time I saw the king and queen was inside this room. Velomir, I believe it is up to you to perhaps find the seemingly secret door. And I kind of just like start walking towards the bookshelves and just pulling books one by one, <laughs> just like yeah. messing around. Like, cause that's we all, all I know of secret doors. We all kind of help and look around the room, see if we notice anything. Okay. Yeah. So the room, uh, it looks like uh, it was, I mean, you, you would guess maybe Velomir, you, you would guess at a glance, it looks like someone like whoever lives in this room was robbed recently. Like there's all yeah. the, all the drawers and stuff are open. There's like oh. clothing on the floor. Uh, the, uh, the, the bed linens are like pulled aside. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's been, it's been like rummaged through and all the most sort of important or valuable stuff has been taken. So, it's really just a ransack room. We don't have any indication. Is there any like perception I can roll to see if there's anything? Yeah, there? if you want to take if you want to take time to investigate the yeah the yeah, let's do that. Let's see that. Okay, yeah. Oof. Okay. Well, should you roll investigation there? Oh, investigation. Yeah, yeah it's Ooh, investigation. Yeah. It's a different yeah different roll. Yeah, you're right. Mm, look at that. Uh, look yeah, that. you should definitely re-roll. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's, <a> <laughs> oh, That's better. Okay. Um. Yeah. So searching through the, uh, through the room, um, you know, the, the place is like, is beautifully appointed. It's a huge bed. The room's giant. Um, there's a, uh, off to one side, there's a, a huge, um, like copper, it looks like a big copper bowl. Uh, it's like a, a bath essentially. Um, it's got its own, uh, its own little like hearth, um, which obviously this time of year is, is, uh, lying, uh, dormant. Um, and uh, there are several windows uh, around one end of the, where, like where the, the room reaches the outside, uh, reaches the corridor. And you can see peering through the room that they have outside their own little private uh, garden um, that yeah. they can access uh, from another area, like not out of the room. Um, the walls are all uh, wooden panels uh, that are painted in a, um, like a pastoral scene. So it's like a crane flying over a pond. Um, there's like a fisherman, there's a big mountain, like all these kind of like pastoral looking scenes painted directly onto the panels of the, of the walls. Um, and uh, you notice that there is a, um, uh, there's an edge of one of these panels uh, that is slightly, um, like slightly offset from the rest of the wall. 
Um, it mm-hmm. could just be warping, like sometimes like wood, because it gets really wet and really hot that sometimes the like wood warps, but you'd guess that there's something else going on there for sure. Yeah. Motion to the, the panel and, and to the others. I'm like, something looks a little strange on that panel there. Perhaps this is the entrance. Yeah, how how would I manipulate him? Um, well, it's just, it's just a it's a just panel? like a it's just a crack between two lacquered panels. Okay, I guess I like put my scimitar in, and then see if I can like use it as a lever to open whatever this is. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you like wedge the wedge the scimitar in, and yeah. like and, like you you feel it like click something clicks, and the the panel um, gives a little bit. Like you can push it in. Okay. Uh, yeah, I push it in and say, good eyes, Velomir. All right. So you, you start to push it and you turn to Velomir like, good eyes, Velomir. And Velomir, you, you just hear the faintest like, uh, and I need, I need, uh, Zephyr, I need you to make a saving throw for I have, me. I have All advantage right. on this with danger That's sense. That's right. You got danger sense. So you feel you, you push the door and you turn to Velomir like, good. And then you're like, wait a second. Barbarian sense is tingling. Um, we get the little wavy lines over your head and go ahead and make your, um, make your dexterity save with advantage. Uh, difficulty is 13. 24. 24. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll let you, I'll let you describe how, what happens, but basically the, the door shoots a poison dart at you, but it doesn't hit. What, I think I point? just quit. I just catch the poison dart. <laughs> yeah. I just Tell catch. what happens. I just go like this. Yeah. I, yeah. I just like catch it in front of my face and say, eh. <laughs> so like yeah, drop. there's this, you know, it's about like, you know, pencil long little metal dart with a, a little like feathered uh, end on it. And yeah, it's a poison dart. Um, and it looks like that pushing the panel, uh, like worked a bellows that shot the shot the dart out at you. Yeah. Um, but the trap has been disarmed. So good stuff, barbarian. <laughs> yeah. I say, let us continue. I, I mean, at least Velomir says, Good eyes to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just kind of like open the door and, and put my hand out to the, the servants and the rest of the party to continue forward. Yeah, the, the servant like looks. And so you turn back to the servant and he's got um, in his hand, and you didn't see it before, maybe you took it out of his tunic or found it somewhere, but he's got a, um, a little bag of um, like fruit or something, like little nuts or something that he keeps like putting into his mouth. And he's got this like stain like all in his teeth and around his mouth from it. And he's like eating them kind of nervously. What kind of, what kind of nuts? Um, make a, uh, I don't know, make a perception check, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Sounds getting a little fishy with this guy. Perhaps maybe a peach pit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but yeah, you can. Perhaps maybe a peach pit. All right. Perception. Uh, would you get a 10? Okay. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's actually fairly common. Um, there's a, it's, it's considered kind of like a, lo- a lower class indulgence. Uh, workers use these a lot. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, it's actually like a mild uh, stimulant. They're, um, they're betel nuts and it's kind of like chewing tobacco. He keeps like, he's eating them and it, it's like generating this weird like reddish spit. Um, that he like he's probably looking for something to spit it in, or has been spitting in like a fern or something while you've been here. Um, if you uh, if you take it, if you like chew it, um, it will um, like slightly heighten your awareness, like and make you a little more alert. Um, yeah. And then they sometimes people mix it with other stuff. So do we all see this, or is it just Velomir? Yeah, yeah, you'll notice he's been he's been chewing on this stuff. I guess as like he passes by into the the pathway or something, I, I just speak up and say. Servant, do you know of temperance? Uh, he, he looks at Baron and he says, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. I'm passively familiar with all the arcana. Why do you ask? Perhaps you should be careful with what you are eating. Yeah, he, he, he like looks at it and kind of like folds the bag up and, and puts it in his... Uh, uh, in his uh, <laughs> inside his tunic and then swallows awkwardly and you can see him like like make a face because yeah. it's not a pleasant like you don't you don't want to swallow that um and he's like um yeah yes of course a terrible terrible nasty habit magistrate i'm just it's that i'm so nervous uh, it helps uh, calm the mind I, i'll uh, i'll go on without it do you wish to keep your hands busy i could have you hold the torch he looks at you like torch <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i like i i Maybe open my pull something from my bag and, and light the light a torch. Okay, yeah, he's yeah. a little startled. Like he takes a step back. Like open fire like this is not like something he's used to, and he takes a step back. 
It's one of our finest torches, though. <laughs> he uh, he shakes his head and, and says, um, "I um, I don't. Y- you are we going?" And he like points where the trap was, like into the hallway. Well, it's just a great honor to hold a torch for a magistrate, and I thought you might want this honor. Ah, yes, I do remember Peter, the great torch bearer of the Battle <laughs> of. They tales of his uh, bravery. And, yeah, uh, I, I just kind of like trail the Battle of. Uh, <laughs> just like trail <laughs> right. off of the thought. Yeah, that one. The Battle of Plum. Yeah. <laughs> and say, yeah. Uh, Velomir, perhaps you should take the lead on this one and. Make sure that no more poison darts and dangerous. I am a little more worse for wear than all of you. Perhaps our guide should uh, take point. I, I kind of like get upset. I'm just like, servant, do you have skill in disarming traps? I, I, I mean, I've. So he's just like, like babbling at you, like, oh God, please don't even go in there. I will lead. I will go first. Valerie's just smiling. <laughs> I, I kind of just like make like tut noises, like snap my, my tongue as you decide to do that, Baron, and just kind of like yeah. roll my eyes. Continue forward behind you. And okay. Go, and I'm very cautiously looking for traps. And, and let's, let's see if, let's see if you can convince the servant to come along. Um, can you, um, Make a somebody make a, pers- a persuasion check with advantage because you're all you're all ganging up on this guy. I mm-hmm. have one not checked. What about the rest of me? Negative one. Persuasion, eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, zero, not checked. I guess. All right, I'll go. Zephyr, it's up to you. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. All right. Uh, he he looks down past you into the into the dark and like takes the the torch and and says um and like looks back at the room and how ransacked it is and and says um. Yes, yes, safer to stay with you, I think. Yes, we did see um, some foul creatures outside the borders, so. Yes, yes, uh, let's, I think holds the torch up, kind of scorches the ceiling a little and brings it down. Yeah. We'll endeavor to do my best, Magistrate. How far down can we, like, does, is this a very tight quarter? So it's not, it's not like a down, like, tunnel, it's like a hallway, like a hidden hall. Um, And, uh, you're not really familiar with the whole layout of the of the castle, but you figure it probably goes like between, like if you were to go around behind, there might be another hallway that's separated further than you'd expect, and it probably just leads to like another way out of the uh, out of the palace. Okay, yeah, I think we just start following it with the okay. Baron at the helm. Yeah. Okay. Cautiously looking for cautiously more poison arrows. I'm sure, so if the arrows go over me. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, make a uh, make a perception check, uh, Baron. And I will cast guidance on myself. Okay. Eighteen. Nice. Okay. Roll your roll your guidance. Four. Nice. Got a four. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, you you follow this this hallway, um, and you are you're assured like you you don't you're definitely sure there's no more traps. Um, you know, you get to uh, the the you follow this hall, and it goes pretty much straight. Um, and then you get to another uh, another door. This one is like an obvious door, not a hidden door. And um, from here, uh, you can see that the door is just like clear. You could open it from this side. It doesn't appear to be locked or barred or anything. And there there are no traps in the hallway. You're safe. Okay. I think this is a door. I I'm gonna try to open it. So I guess I slowly push against the door to open it. Okay. Sure. So the door opens and um, you you can feel when you push it like a little bit of resistance and there's like a rustling sound on the other side. And uh, as you get it further out, um, you can see branches and like leaves uh, sort of like fall back as you push past them. And it looks like this door leads out into like a bunch of um, like bushes, under like low bushes and, and trees. Um, you, you probably wouldn't be able to see the door from the other side because there's all this foliage in front of it. Looks like this leads outside. I, I see trees and branches and stuff. So I guess I will slowly step outside. Once continuously looking for traps still. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you um, you step outside and um, you uh, you can see what looks like a um, like a little 
don't want to say garden, but it's not a forest. It's like an overgrown, like an intentionally allowed, like a park, I guess. So you can see there's a, a gravel path off in the distance illuminated by moonlight. There's a bunch of these, uh, these sort of trees around, these sort of stunted like maple trees. And uh, there's a pond. And um, you haven't seen this, this park before, but you didn't really like see everything in, in town. So you'd guess by the amount of time that you walked, you're still inside the city walls, um, but that you're now outside the palace walls. So this this little hallway exited out there. All right. Uh, is, is, so there's a clearing out here. Yeah, you can you can get past the trees and out into the into the park itself. I think, um, and I think we all uh, then funnel out into the clearing and then discuss what to do next. Yeah. Okay. When sure. uh, when the when we're outside and you know the the servant comes forward with the torch, do we see any clear paths of where it looks like you know a troop of guards and right yeah People yeah you're stomp looking, through yeah yeah looking for boot prints or damaged trees um yeah i mean definitely there is there are definitely signs that people have moved through this place there's broken tree branches and and uh, the ground has uh, obvious boot prints yeah okay so, I, I think i like hunch down and and you know look at that a little bit closely i don't see any signs of blood or anything right no okay no. i think we I, I think we should continue on looks like we're on the right path very well. There's definitely a trail here we should follow. I think. Okay. I yeah, you want to try and track him? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who's going to do that? I guess me. Uh, let's see. What are we rolling? Just uh, survival to uh, to track. Everyone else doesn't have it. Like you guys, what do you? What are your I have survivals? a one in survival. That's checked. I do too. But it's checked. So I have yep. three in survival. Yeah. Either of them can help you to get advantage on that roll. Cool. All right. And... Nice. 20. 20. 20. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 You can, you can follow this, uh, follow this trail across the, uh, across the park. I check for traps everywhere I walk. <laughs> Just like random park traps. Okay. Uh, make a, make a perception check. Yeah. I will make that perception check. <laughs> Do it. Adam. Do it. I dare you. All right. So you get 12. Perception sucks. Yeah. That's, well, that's fine. Step right into a cow patty. <laughs> okay, all right. So you get you get twelve. That's good. Um, so you you make your way across the uh, across the open area of the park, um, kind of skirt the the, the big pond, and um, you can see now once you're you're like out here and you've got a little bit of a, of elevation, you can see that there is a um, looks like a groundskeeper's like hut. There's like a little little hut off uh, in the in the distance. You'd say maybe like a 10 minute walk from here across the across the park. It's a little groundskeeper hut. There's definitely lights on inside and there's like a little bit of smoke coming from a from a chimney. Uh, and that seems to be where the tracks lead. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I there are tracks this way. This seems to be the best place to follow. This seems secluded. Perhaps the king and queen will be awaiting us. Safe and sound. I think we, we make proceed. make way, maybe continue shooting the shit with the servant as we do. Yeah, yeah. So you've extinguished the torch, I assume, because it's you're out in like the moonlight. Or are you carrying it around while you're walking in the park? Uh, no, I think he keeps the torch. I think we you got it lit. Okay. Sure. Yeah, he's kind of nervous, so he wants the light. Okay, all right. So he's got he's got the light. Um, yeah, he doesn't like being outside the palace. He just keeps like looking around. You can see he's going he's going through some like agoraphobia, you know, like looking around and feeling uncomfortable. And uh, yeah, and, and you you lead him to uh, to this this little uh, this little hut. Um, and as you get closer, uh, I think you notice. Um, oh boy. You notice the uh, there there's some like trees nearby, and standing in the shadows of these trees, uh, oh. there are there are guards. Uh, <laughs> They're not making like a huge effort to stay like stealthy, but like they're holding crossbows. And um, when they see you coming, they, they recognize you right away. They don't like point their crossbows at you or anything, but they just like watch you as you get closer. Um, one of them, I think, turns to go to the hut and like go to open the door and go inside. Probably to tell whoever's inside that you're coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I say this bodes well. And maybe I jog up to the, instead of, you know, kind of cautiously approaching, I, I, make haste to the building okay all right so when you get uh when you get closer you're met by uh the the door opens and um uh commander visal uh the the knight uh, is there he's um he's wearing his like uh burnished uh like breastplate uh he has his, his scimitar at his belt 
Um, and the he looks like he dressed quickly. Like he has just like a very, uh, he has a turban on, but it's not his big, um, like kind of fancy court one. It's just like a much faster uh, one. And um, yeah, and he steps out of the door as, you, uh, as you're approaching. And he, he has a, um, a look of uh, concern, but also maybe like relief on his face that you, um, uh, that he, he sees the magistrates coming. And he's like, okay, something's going to change. Maybe you have some information, but he looks like urgently like he wants to, to do something. Yeah, okay. I, I approach him and say, Commander, I'm glad to see the gods have spared you on this terrible evening. He uh, he, he sort of scowls and, and like puts his hand out, like like getting you to like, he's like, the king and queen are asleep. I prefer to let them rest. I, I need to know what's going on. I've heard rumors. My men are saying that we were attacked. I saw the fire. Yes. Magistrates, what's going on? The fire was my doing. Uh, unfortunately, the battle got out of hand. Someone has killed the page, and it was an assassination attempt. Successful one, obviously. He, uh, he raises an eyebrow. How did these assassins get into the castle? Well, it was no ordinary assassination. There was dark magic involved. The sickness of the page was there was a, some sort of dark magic inside him, draining him slowly. And he, when he died tonight, these shadow creatures came out of him, and that's what's been ransacking the town. One of the, one of the guards nearby that, that can, like, is standing within earshot um, says a quick, a quick like, prayer to the world, like, God's protect us from the Mara. And, uh, and the, the captain, um, the commander looks at you and says, um, he says, then what, what is the fate of these creatures? Are they, and he kind of looks at you like, do we still have a problem? We seem to have taken care of most of them. There might be one or two stuck. Baron knows much about these creatures and they do fear daylight. So... They will only go into hiding as soon as the sun rises. Perhaps then we shall seek them out. We have dispatched many in, in the city. Uh, also, there's an acolyte and a guard that you should hold in high regard. They served us very well in battle. At the chapel, the majority of the city rest, as well as a handful of guards. If a ring of the bell is heard, that only means uh, that we need to go there at once. I'm glad that the king and queen found you, by the way. I sent them as soon as there was trouble. Yeah, he, uh, he nods. He says, you did well in that. I've kept them safe. We've not had a problem like this before. I never had to use this place, but it seems to have done its job. Did your guards find any bodies in the palace? I instructed them to burn them, if so. He, uh, he nods. I was wondering about that. They did. Uh, we've done as you asked. These creatures, unfortunately, can reproduce in dead bodies. So that's why it's very important that we sweep the town for bodies in the morning and burn anything that's still dead, that hasn't been burned already. Of course. My, and he, he just kind of like looks concerned, like he's thinking all this stuff over. He says, my, my main duty is to protect the king and queen and the page, God rest their soul. But I will offer whatever aid I can. We appreciate that. The page will find his new vessel. It will return. Yeah, and he looks at he looks at you, Baron, like as if to like a, a priest, like reassuring him of that would be yeah. a lot more helpful. He didn't. It seemed to me that he just died. He didn't become the undead, so he should reincarnate as the cycle would would have it. He nods. Then we should begin the period of mourning as soon as we can. It is not quite over yet. Wait until at least the sun rises. Of course. There will be things to do. Is it safe to return the king and queen to the castle? Not until daylight. Very well. And he like looks at the sky and you can see it's like already starting to, to turn uh, like a, a deep sort of umber color. Uh, so he says, um, uh, good, then when the sun rises, I will return them to their chambers and we'll begin discussion about the morning. There was a very interesting man at the inn, uh, the tattooed man. I'm sure you have heard of him by now. Do you know anything he, about this man? Have you seen him? He, he nods. He says, um, uh, we don't know anything of him. He seems to be a traveler. 
we have those from time to time. My guards noticed him, an armed stranger in the village, something to keep an eye on, but I never had any problem with him. We do not believe him to be a threat, but he does say that wherever he goes, there is tragedy that follows. So something to note. Raises an eyebrow. Do you wish me to uh, arrest this man, Magistrates? Perhaps maybe just keep an eye on him. And uh, if anything suspicious happens or out of the ordinary, then he already appears. Uh, just let us know. I'll send some guards to the inn to keep an eye on him. We should take inventory. We will stay awake until the sun rises, but we do need our rest. The battle was not kind. Then we yeah, will yeah. figure out yeah. exactly what has happened, or at least to the best of our abilities. Perhaps maybe more discreet we should... Uh, I do not, do not know if this traveler will take kindly to having a babysitter on him. Perhaps a little more subtle. Somebody perhaps undercover just to keep eyes on him. Not so blatant that you're uh, having your guards watch him. I agree. Yeah. Something, he nods. something tells me this man will know no matter who you send to watch him. It is a pleasantry. Is, also, um, oh God. Th th thankfully, the town is small, and uh, I have uh, loyal guards nearly everywhere. Uh, it's hard to stay hidden in a place like this, and it doesn't seem like this traveler is trying. So we'll keep an eye out, um, but I, I, I won't make it obvious. You should also perhaps make sure no one leaves the city until we can question everyone or your guards can question everyone. Whoever did this to the page was allowed entry into his room. A, and, I, and I kind of like, I pause before I say it out loud and maybe I like lean to his ear and, and say, you know, there was a something in his mouth, a plant came out from his chest, there was a budding orchid made from his heart, blah, 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 and then pull back and say, blah, 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 budding orchid, you get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, go down that whole path very, very quietly to him and say, that is not something that can be done from afar. It would have had personal contact with his killer. Something tells me that whoever did this is not in the village because he's been sick for a long time and it happened when he was outside of the city where at the town he was visiting. I don't think whoever did it is here tonight. It might be true. Has the page met with anyone in recent weeks that had a reason to be angry with him. Uh, he sh shakes his head and, well, no, no, not to be angry with him, but uh, I mean, many <laughs> priests, the, the village doctor, the, the pages had many visitors, uh, all of you, uh, since they fell ill, but no one that I would suspect of foul play. Tell me, Commander, do you know of any druids or men of magic that could analyze this seed that we found. We show them the seed of what we found after we killed one of the shades. Mm, yeah, he looks at it and uh, shakes his head and says, um, I, I, I'm no man of learning, but even looking upon that thing, I know that it is, it gives me chills. I, we have no say, you could speak with the fortune teller. Uh, she is the most learned in these matters in our village. And that's who we will speak to in the morning. He nods. Is there anything else you need from us, sir? Shiksa said, no, no, you brought warning to the king and queen. You did what you could for the page. I'm sure that we will have need of your services in time to come, but for now, no. Thank you, Magistrate. Make sure, the, make sure the streets keep clean until the sun's, sun rise. And keep the king and queen safe. He, he nods, as is my duty. <clears throat> I guess what are we going to... Maybe a long rest? Yeah, uh, we, we make our way back to probably the, the town and just yeah. kind of do a, a normal circuit of uh, patrol, make sure yeah. everything's good check until the sun, sun rises, yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna like walk around and just check on the on things until the sunrise because it's like sunrise is in about an hour probably. Yeah, that's kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hour, hour or two. Okay. Yeah. And then what? Uh, then take a long rest. After okay. first telling the guards to sweep the town house by house, looking for signs, and if they find something, to come alert us. Yeah. 
Okay, sure. Um, so uh, I guess then you go to the temple, you talk to that sergeant, and you send them, uh, you get them to like organize that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right, and then you go to the inn. So if you're taking a long rest, that means you'll be done like around four in the afternoon. Sunsets um, around first thing in the six morning. or eight. Morning afternoon. What does <laughs> it set here? Um, it's, it's the beginning of, uh, it's the beginning of summer. So the sun, sun will set quite late. Okay. Yeah. I think that's enough. And then we'll, then we'll go and search the palace with the guards as well. Okay. I think um, also when we, when we tell the guards, we instruct them, you know, search out the building, search out the palace, but don't engage. And if you do find something, you know, come and wake us up basically. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, let's take a look at how, um, I'm gonna just roll some stuff. Uh, okay. we'll, see how, we'll see how effective the guards are at their, their job. So the guards, they'll make, what's, um, somebody's got their character sheet open. What's investigation based on? Like what's uh, that? Intellect. Yeah. Intellect. yeah. Okay, all right. So we'll give them advantage because there's a bunch of them searching. Nice, good job what? guards. Damn. Yeah, the guards, the guards crit their investigation. <laughs> um, that's cool. And All right, then... here's the. We just need to have Adam make his own rolls for us <laughs> in the future, guys. Yeah, yeah, roll yeah. against myself. Yeah, just uh, have him roll against himself every time we'll win. Mm-hmm. Let's oppose that um, with one of these. This is I'm gonna roll, but I actually need to add another two to whatever I get. <laughs> all right so the guards did literally the best possible job they could do and unfortunately uh with that extra plus two isn't a crit always better result than a f no fucking price oh. still it's still a number so uh the guards i think um when you are when you are awakened uh the next when you're awakened the next day the, uh, the, the guard that comes, the, the sergeant, um, her name, she actually has a name, so we can start referring to her as the sergeant. Her name is Sergeant Tien. Um, sergeant Tien uh, gives you her full report, and she seems very proud of her men, right? They, they searched the town. They returned the, the villagers to their homes, resituated everybody. They burned all the bodies they found. Um, they actually didn't find any more than the ones that were in the palace and the ones that you found uh, in the square. That seems to be where those shadows went straight to. Um, so they say, you know, we didn't find any more bodies. It seems like no one else was hurt aside from, from these people. Um, you know, we're going to prepare a proper funeral, um, uh, stuff, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to deal with that. But, um, yeah, we, we found nothing. It seems like the, the creatures were destroyed. It seems like you've done, uh, you've, you've done a good job magistrates. And that's, that's that. I say, thank you, Sergeant Tian. Your work will be reported to the night. Well done. And then as soon as they leave, I, I turn and say, we're going to the palace and checking with our own eyes. Yeah. These seem like simple folks, so I, I think our eyes might be a little better. I agree. And I also want to investigate the room, see if we can learn anything new. Do you wish to do this before? Uh, chat with the fortune, fortune teller at some point, too. Perhaps we can chat with the fortune teller when the sun sets. We only have so much time. It's true. That's true. Yeah, if these things are in, if they're in hiding. Um, uh, also, uh, you get uh, spent hit dice back for your long rest. So everybody goes up to full health, gets all your spells back, but you don't get all your hit dice back. You get um, a number of dice equal to half your total number. So everybody gets one hit die back. So if you Very just cool. spent one, you get your one back. If you spent two, you've only got one now. All right. Gotcha. For your next short rest. Um, cool. Yeah. So it's it's. Like mid to late afternoon, uh, you've got probably four or five hours if you're lucky of, I'm going to say four hours of, uh, of sunlight um, before, before night falls again. And uh, you've just finished uh, having your sort of like having your breakfast and talking to uh, Sergeant Tian about uh, what happened overnight during the early parts of the day. Yeah. I think we go to uh, the palace as soon as breakfast is finished or whatever, lunch is finished. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, you return to the, uh, to the palace and it seems like with the exception of the fact that there are additional guards here, you see four guards out front instead of, instead of two, um, the guards look tired. Like you can see just like walking past them. Like these guys haven't slept. 
Um, so they're they're doing their damnedest to stay awake and alert, but they're you can see they're running running low on energy. You pass through the uh, through the gate, like they, they keep it shut, but they allow you to to pass. And inside, uh, you can you can see there's a um, like a servant raking the the, the sand garden uh, outside. The door is uh, the door on the inside is open to allow the wind to to pass through, and allow the place to air out because the whole place smells heavily of smoke. Right? It's all it's all very like smoke damaged from the fire. Um, and uh, otherwise the the courtiers seem to be out sort of doing things, but the king and queen aren't like around. They're not holding audience. Um, so it's less quiet obviously than it was last night, but it's, um, there's still a little bit of a, yeah. Sure. A little bit of a of tension in the air. Okay. Yeah. I think we go, the first stop is probably the pages room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or the page's deathbed, really. Yeah, the page's uh... massacre. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't think, I think that they would have, the door is closed um, and there are guards posted in front of it. Um, and there are like soot marked, like footprints uh, kind of like around the outside of the door. Um, and uh, yeah, and when you approach uh, the guards, uh, they, they salute you and uh, let you inside. Um, The room is untouched otherwise. Uh, There's like water damage and stuff. Like they've they've thrown water on the fire. There's some sand splashed around, but the the body of the page is still lying there. And it's been lying there uh, in the relative heat all all day so far. Probably smells. Yeah. Well, what's weird is the smell that you you smell when you come in isn't what you would expect. Like Zafira, you've smelled corpses that have lain out in the sun all day. And that's not what this smell is. You smell first and foremost uh, a note of, burnt garden and, and charred wood, right? The floors and animals all peeled where the fire was. That's the first smell. And then under it, there's this sort of sickly, sweet, kind of like dry smell. Um, it's like vaguely, vaguely like acidic, like your, your, your eyes water a little bit when you smell it, but it doesn't smell like, you know, sun rotted corpse. Uh, there's yeah. just this very faint, like, like, like really high amounts of, of, of like perfume maybe or something. Right. Um, such that the alcohol in it is kind of like getting to you. Yeah. That's the closest analogy I can think of to the smell. It doesn't mean that that's what you smell, but just in terms of imagining it. Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think we enter the room and I say, Baron, this is your job. I have no idea where to begin. <laughs> uh, I wish I did either, but I'll do my best. <laughs> so I guess I will approach the body and just look at all the organs and stuff and see if I can see anything amiss or any clues that would help me figure out what's been happening. Okay, sure. Yeah, you want to you want to look around. Yeah. Uh all right, yeah, make a make an investigation check as you peruse the room. Can we give him well, I guess I'm oh, not crit. helping. Him. He doesn't need <laughs> shit. He doesn't all right. Shit. I don't Baron, need shit. Baron laying it down. Fucking Inspector 20. Inspector Baron turns on the turns on the magic. Okay. So, I mean, ask me questions. What are you what are you looking for here? Uh, for the body, um, other than the heart, uh, that was all deformed. Do I see anything awkward in the other yeah. extremities and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You snap on your, your plastic gloves <laughs> and get in there. Um, no, taking a look at it, like walking around the body, you've, I mean, I guess here's the thing. Like, have you ever, have you, have you been trained to do like examinations of, of cadavers before? Like, did you learn that in the monastery? Yeah, the monastery medicine is a part of our because we don't can't always rely on magic, so we have to sometimes rely on physical oh. uh, healing. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we get as part of your your investigation montage, we see Baron like in the monastery, uh, you know, an, an old monk like leaning over your shoulder, looking at as you uh, as you um, uh, transcribe uh, an, an anatomy textbook, right? Because there's no printing press, so you, every book ever made is handwritten. So <laughs> a lot of what monks would do would be copy books. So they, you know, a traveling monk would bring someone, some monk brought you in it, this anatomy text. And maybe it was Baron's job too. So you're like sketching out a human, kind of the Vitruvian man, like symbol, like working on this. And the, the monk is kind of like watching you and nodding. And that fades to the scene of the uh, the page lying on the on the bed. So the first and foremost thing that you see here is um, whatever happened, um, this thing, like his, his chest cavity is full of these now dead, um, like thin vines. And the vines seem to have grown through his, uh, through his veins and or through their veins and arteries. Um, so use that as sort of the root structure. And as such, 
all of the pages of their organs, their liver, their, their lungs, all that stuff has been used, like sapped, like dead soil. Um, and a thirsty plant has just like drained them dry. So these organs are all withered and, and falling apart and look like the organs of a much, much older person. Um, so they're, yeah, they're just like infested with these, these vines. And it looks like the thing that was inside was feeding off of, uh, off of the, the pages internal organs. So it's like a root that's sapping the life out of the whole body into this heart, whatever the heart thing in the middle is. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. So then I'll next, I'll take a really close look at the, the, the thing that was spewing out the shadow, see what I can tell about it. Sure. So it, it looks like, I mean, you're, make a, make a nature check for me. So let's use all your knowledge checks. Just roll all the knowledges. Ooh. Okay. So nature, maybe not your strong point, maybe botany, not, not, <laughs> you know, the, the angle you came in at, but the, um, the, the, um, the flower is a lotus. You've seen lotuses lots and lots of times. Um, the lotus is uh, considered sort of a, um, like a spiritually significant plant. Um, there's lots of uh, lots of like pictures or portrayals of various um, priests or saints. Often the um, the actually the page uh, in in not this page but the page as a title. Um, the the lotus is a symbol tied to the page because it's a symbol of um, rebirth. Uh, and of, uh, of beauty, you know, the religious aspect of it. As for the physical thing, it just looks like a weird lotus flower that has died. Um, its petals are quite thick um, and it's gone, um, it's gone a kind of grayish black, um, like, a, um, uh, like the rest of the, the sort of organs in the page's body. It's gross. Yeah. And then um, I lean down and smell the flesh. Does it smell? get a closer whiff of it it definitely doesn't smell like a dead body um it smells like a it smells like funereal incense um and actually if you make a um make a religion check for me 18 okay um this this smell you like lean in and like you know waft the dead body smell um it's a specific kind of funereal incense that is sacred uh, generally to, um, it's so powerful because it's used to anoint the bodies of uh, dead warriors, like people who have died in, in battle, who often have their organs pierced, uh, and so they don't smell very good. That's why it's very strong. So it's a funereal incense that's generally only applied to soldiers. And I think maybe that's at the point where Zafira, you like recognize that smell. You like finally put together like, wait a second, I've smelled this before. And you, re you have that same revelation at the, uh, at the time. Yeah. I guess I, uh, after I see, you know, me and Valamir are just sitting there watching, like, I think that's the heart. That's usually where I try to k strike for, et cetera, and all that nonsense. I say, Baron, how does this happen? Where does it begin? Where does what begin? All of this. How does this occur? From what I can tell, and I'm dealing with things outside of my expertise, there's some sort of plant that's growing inside the body and it looks like it drains the life force out of it and when it's gathered enough energy it somehow blooms into these shadow creatures and it's all i can piece together right now is i don't know what type of flower this is um i think you recognize the smell as i do i wonder if one of the servants has applied something to this as a honor to the body or if it just naturally smells this way. So perhaps someone fed him something with these seeds inside. Yes. It's possible that either he ate something, drank something. Uh, fortunately, we'd have to know more about this plant to know how it gets inside the body. I believe there are too many ways for this to have occurred. He, he will not have records of everything he has taken into his body in the past weeks I do not know if this is even something we can seek i know the only thing i can think of is everything seems to point to his last trip down river and he could have eaten a gift from a traveler he could have drank something from a traveler someone it seems to me like this is very foul dark magic someone did this intentionally to the page it's just a matter of who and i don't know if we can determine that Perhaps that is our best lead, is to find his enemies, or enemies of the city. Someone wanted 
this town to fall and we need to know who and why and it could be for all we know tied to the other town from the south or they could be separate for all we know we can... someone definitely wanted to un unmantle this the establishment here by getting rid of the page we can try and find answers tonight but for now i think we seek a fight and i kind of like walk towards the door and we have many corners to check I kind of walk outside and start walking towards perhaps rooms that, you know, haven't been re-entered or doors that were shut or anything like that. Like, I'm basically just checking everywhere in the palace to start off yeah. with. We should do a full sweep of all the rooms just to be sure. Yeah. To make I, sure at least the palace is safe. I think, like, we honestly go, like, room by room as a group. Or, sorry, yeah. as individuals to go as fast as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as long as those rooms aren't, like, across the fucking place from one another, like... Yeah, you're walking, like, with, yeah, yeah. We, we check a room, but we're all... Together, within, but, yeah, but... You know, close enough to run to each other if we need to. Sure. Sure, yeah, like, staying within a, a decent distance. Okay, and you're just searching the palace? The palace, yeah. yeah for now. Okay. For now. Sure, yeah. Um, well, you're... I mean, just there to save. I'm just kidding. You're working, you're working together, so um, someone just make an investigation check with advantage. Uh, who is that? Uh, nice. Zero with no check. I think you're the best at it, Max. Zero, um, no check. No. Well, uh, yep, me. Okay. Here we go. Ten. Oh, what the fuck? And we use the gods as well to help us. <laughs> yeah, of course. For uh, listeners, I rolled so a one. 13. No, you had advantage, so you rolled. Th yeah. it's a oh, 13. wait, I rolled a ten. Never mind. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thir bad. Thirteen total. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so searching the uh, searching the grounds, uh, you find no evidence that you can't one of you can't directly tie to the actions of the night before. Like if you find a disturbance, it's one you saw happen. Yeah. Uh, and you've already seen you've already seen it all they've done a good job like cleaning up the place. Uh, not to like hide anything, but you know, it's they got to get the palace up and running if the king and queen are going to live here. Um, so it, it looks it looks everything looks more or less fine uh, from from where y'all are standing. Uh, you don't see any sign that uh, there are uh, yeah anything hidden here necessarily. Seems safe. Everything seems a okay in the palace. And after we're done searching, what time is it? Um, I feel like that probably takes. I mean, you've been here before. You get a, a good look at the place. Let's call it. I'll make a roll because I can't decide what the dice have on it. Flip coin. Survey says, okay, it takes an hour. Great. Hey. So a few more hours left. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I turn and say, well, the palace seems safe. Perhaps we go check the town. Look for buildings that have no owners anymore because they have died. Places that have not been entered yet. That is where they would hide. They can potentially hide, yes. So the three of you going to from from like house to house through the whole town is going to take a long time. Like it'll definitely be definitely be night. Do you want to put a like maximum amount of time uh, on it, or do you want to? I mean, I, I think just, we like, want to check everything. Like, uh, I don't know if we have any other, and, and maybe that's a question to you two. Like, was there something else you wanted to do? I feel like we should check everything. Yeah, yeah. like that is this is our biggest worry is that there's one left or more than that if we don't get them in daylight we're gonna have an even harder time at night yes i'm in agreement as tedious as it will be at least we will know that they are not hiding in any uh place inside the village that we've checked anyways right. how long will this take by the way long time uh, right? I mean, yeah, three people well, searching. Actually. Three people searching the houses. Uh, every house in a village that houses like a thousand people. Days, probably. So, we fast forward two days later. <laughs> cool. Everyone in town is dead. Um, <laughs> I mean, the other the other thing you can do is spend the rest of your time searching, and then like, okay, so this is the thing. If if there's if there's a shadow out there, it's probably like in somebody's abandoned basement, hiding in the darkness waiting for night to fall so it can sneak out and start attacking people again. So if you spend this time searching, you've got a tiny, tiny sliver that you'll like, soup, maybe you'll super luck out. I'll still, I'll still let you roll. If you can like, you know, get a, a 25 or something on an investigation check, great, cool, you did it, you lucked out. But it's, it's a very slim chance you'll luck into finding this, this place in particular. Um, night falls, 
if there are more shadows, they'll they'll awaken, rise to the streets, and go after people. In which case, that'll be much easier to find because they'll be screaming and blood and whatever. That's true. Unless there's not, right? Like, here's the thing. Imagine it's in the basement of a, a house that has a family or even worse, a house that isn't a family house. It's just like a couple of people living in it. Uh, the shadows wake up. They kill those people. Nobody finds out, right? Those people die. A couple hours later, now you got eight shadows. Those people go to their neighbors, kill them. Like, you want it to be as big a noise as possible because if it isn't, slowly they'll just knock people off and grow in size. So what do you want to do? We get the villagers and get them all into the center. <laughs> we right. I mean, you could take all their all the food supply and put it in one place. Uh, you yourself said though that would be very hard to uh, stop. So that'd be really not not advantageous either. Yeah, yeah it, really would be, it would be harder. It'd be harder to break up, like because it would turn into a riot, basically, like really yeah. quickly. There would be there'd be panic and chaos, right? Because someone'd be like, "Oh god, there's a shadow killing this person next to me." They all panic and try to run. And everybody, calm down. Let's see who did it. Yeah, that's right. You've never had your soul sucked? Please, come on. It was Mr. Gray in the basement with the tentacles. Right. Uh, I mean, what do you guys think? I think we have to find a way to, you know, get the people in places where if they start getting attacked, they can alert us. And then somehow we get there as fast as we can. Here's the thing. Or we evacuate think- the town. It, waiting till like or you know searching further in the town is not going to really do much unless we super luck out. I guess the only thing we can do that might be productive is to actually go visit the fortune teller and accrue some more knowledge about maybe the seed. But I don't know how much more knowledge is to be had. We could also throw a whatever a, a morning party. Whatever you, no. whatever the fuck this world co- would call something like that, <laughs> at sure. the uh, at the temple and make sure that everyone goes there, and you know, supply enough festivities or at least go talk to the knight to make sure that there's enough festivities so that people spend the entire evening there, and we just yeah. we figure it out and and maybe, I don't know. We only have a we few hours though to open every window, open every door, make sure there's nothing but light in your place. Yeah, I don't know. We could also just I think the, the, only way we check, the only way we were able to actually like check the city is if we make it some sort of decree to have the people help us look. And if they do find something, make noise. Yeah, we could do that. Why don't we why don't we take a break? We'll think about it during the break and then okay. formulate plans. I kind of I, I like the idea that Max just had. I just don't know how we disseminate that information that fast. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So We'll think about it. We'll take a break and we'll come back and jump into the fourth and final hour here of Court of Swords, uh, week number six, seven, week number seven. We'll be right back. Don't go there. We'll see you then. (laughs) 